Hello, I'm Justin Briley. Welcome along to the second in a series of four programmes in which we ask, have we misread the Bible? My guests today are Steve Chalk and Andrew Wilson. Steve Chalk is the founder of the Oasis Trust and pastor of Oasis Church in Waterloo. He's a well-known author and a leading and sometimes outspoken voice in the British church. In recent decades, Steve has sparked intense debates on issues like the nature of the cross and homosexuality. Most recently, he's published an article in the March edition of Christianity magazine calling for a fresh approach to biblical interpretation. Andrew Wilson is a speaker, author and theologian with the New Frontiers Network. Andrew takes a more conservative and, in his view, more biblical approach to issues like the atonement and sexuality. His own article on biblical interpretation can be found in the April edition of Christianity magazine. Well, today they're joining me to talk about whether we need to change the way we read the Bible. And over the course of these four programmes, we're discussing their different views on biblical inerrancy, infallibility, authority, the atonement and sexuality. Uh, now, for the articles by Stephen Andrew, uh, you may want to go and read them or indeed watch more of these conversations. You can find all the links at christianitymagazine.co.uk slash Bible debate. In this second programme, we're tackling the subject of how we interpret tough passages in the Old Testament. Uh, the warfare, uh, the seemingly harsh moral code and punishments in certain parts of scripture, uh, the bits that we don't normally post up as inspirational Bible verses on our Facebook <laughs> feed. Um, so how do we treat these passages? How should we treat the whole Bible in turn? Steve and Andrew, welcome again to the programme. Thanks. Great to have you with me. Uh, so I'm going to start off again this week with a, a real world example. And this is the one you use actually at the start of your magazine article for Christianity, Steve. In May 2012, Michael Gove announced plans for the distribution of the King James Version of the Bible into every school in England to mark the 400th anniversary of its publication. Now, arch atheist Richard Dawkins was an unlikely voice giving his backing to this project. But his motives became clear when he wrote in The Observer that people who do not know the Bible well have been gulled into thinking it's a good guide to morality. The surest way to disabuse yourself of this pernicious falsehood is to read the Bible itself. So Dawkins may well have his opinions, but how do Christians make sense of the Bible and its morality? That's what we're asking today. Uh, you quoted that particular example in your article, Steve. What, what do you make of Dawkins' claim that if people read the Bible, they'll be disabused of the idea that it's any sort of a guide to morality? I uh, met Richard Dawkins and debated with him and talked with him, and I wouldn't really like to debate him on his subject. He's absolutely brilliant. But on the subject of literary criticism, on the subject of hermeneutics, by which I'm not talking about the Bible necessarily, just how you deal with ancient documents and understand ancient documents, he really needs to go back to school. So his ideas are very juvenile, that's what I say, or worse than that, he actually does understand literary criticism and he's choosing to ignore all that to make a kind of cheap point. Okay. The point I raise though in my article is that over the years I've come to understand see, sadly, that so many Christians also have exactly the same juvenile understanding of the Bible and then go losing their faith, end up in all sorts of troubles. Uh, when in actual fact, if we can give them, uh, give people and develop ourselves a more robust and a deeper understanding of what the Bible actually is, we attribute to, to it the authority mm that it deserves. So okay. that's really where yeah. I'm coming from on this whole thing. Mm. I'm sure in your dealings online and so on, you must have come across the many sort of yeah, yeah. atheist sites and commentaries uh, <coughs> and so on that, that take issue with There's the atheist Testament. websites. Yeah, apparently, yeah. And I've, they've I've, read this. <laughs> do they say the same? But it, it's a frequent objection for, thrown at the Bible. Yeah. Um, how can you worship a God who yeah, yeah. approves massacres and yeah. this and that and the other? So what's your take on, on Dawkins' view? Very similar to Steve, really. Um, I, th I think a, a hermeneutical uh, blindness or naivety or deliberate, I don't know, actually. I, I'm, I'm not really been aware. Obviously, I, my, the first time we ever met was because I'd written a response to Richard Dawkins and picked up on mm. some of these mm. issues as we were talking about it. I, um, I suspect Steve and I would, would differ on it. what we do with some of the texts and whether or not they actually historically happened or not. I think that's mm. probably, I would say yes, and Steve might say no on some of those. But in terms of how we are to handle them in, through the lens of Christ and how we are to see 
as we talked about last week, unfolding revelation, uh, coming to a climax in Jesus and what he does in Israel's story and how people are to live today and the inclusivity of the Gentiles and all the nations and so on. I suspect Stephen and I'd be on exactly the same page on that one. Um, and and that I agree, actually, I've also met Christians who, because they read the whole Bible and aren't aware of that unfolding story, mm. An analogy I've often used is that Lord of the Rings where, you know, you imagine Gandalf gives an instruction to the hobbits at the start of book one and says, meet me by the prancing pony in Bree. Um, the best way of honouring what he said is not if Frodo and Sam are climbing up Mount Doom in book three and then Sam suddenly grabs him and goes, Mr. Frodo, we've got to go back to the prancing pony because Gandalf said so. You think, no, 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 that's not how you're supposed to read commands that occur in one part of the story. Okay. And on this, I'm sure we'd entirely yeah. agree. So you, you actually, you'd honour what he said then by seeing where it fitted into Israel's unfolding story and okay. see that the instruction you're given now is different. So Let, let, me, let me give a, yeah. a, a, an example then from Scripture, you know, one that potentially you may take a different view on how we're to, to interpret this, apply it today and so on. Uh, one that frequently is thrown in as an objection is uh, there's a story in Numbers 15 um, in which a man is brought before Moses. He has to decide on what to do with him. He's been picking up sticks on the Sabbath and Moses believes he hears from God that this man should be put to death. And so obviously the objection is what a ridiculous morality that a man should be put to death for picking up sticks on the supposed holy day. What, how do you treat that kind of a story in the Old Testament? Um, well, the first thing is, you see, I, I think it's saying, I, I believe it happened. That's okay. Now, so you don't particularly doubt the historicity oh, no, in, no, on that one? because no. I think it's narrative. I okay. think that to take the Bible seriously isn't the same thing as to take it literally. I think okay. sometimes you take it literally and not taking it seriously. But what you've got to do, you've got to be honest with the text. You're going to say, is this a poem? Mm -hmm. Is this a dream? You know, is this a piece of historical narrative? Is this a piece of legal code? Is this a parable? Mm -hmm. And you've got to start with there. Now, actually, there's loads of scholars. So I have a very high view of the Bible and, and a very supremely high view of Jesus. So mm -hmm. it's hard for me to talk about the Old Testament without talking about Jesus in the end. Okay. Um, but at, at having a bash at it, <laughs> if you see what I mean, I am sure that happened. Actually, uh, very many evangelical scholars, which is I think what Andrew was referring to, would say it didn't happen. And it, it's just that in those days, there's a genre of literature where you um, you, you use hyperbole, really. Yeah. Basically, you, you paint this picture and the pi picture's there to teach you a great lesson. But the point with that, as I've debated with people, so what would be the lesson of this story mm. if it's just a story and it didn't happen? The lesson would be God takes people who break who pick up sticks on the Sabbath, he takes it very seriously and he punishes them badly. <laughs> That's the lesson of the story. I think it, I would say it happened. Uh, in the end, whether it happened or not, the lesson's the same, it, isn't it? It's still a harsh yeah, moral judgment. It's a harsh judgment. moral yeah. judgment. Yeah. Uh, and, so, 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 and the funny thing about the story is that Moses is confused, isn't he, in the story? He doesn't know what to do, and Aaron too. Yeah. So they keep this guy in custody whilst they go ask God, and God says, kill him. So that's why he gets killed. I would say, though, that, that if you bring Jesus to this, and all my understanding of Jesus, he would simply say, actually, you know, that was a, these guys are on a trajectory, they're on a path, they're, they're slowly learning, God's guiding them. He's pulling them out of Egypt, this happens in the desert, mm -hmm. not just physically, but he's pulling them out of Egypt and its ways, mentally and spiritually <coughs> and morally. He's dragging them, not just across a literal desert, but he's bringing them across the desert and the barrenness of their moral thinking to new high ground, which we only finally see in Jesus. So I I would say, yeah, it happened, but and, would Jesus condone it? No. And and so in that sense, they, if if it happened, then they thought they were hearing that actually they misheard God. They 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 I, were more subject to their cultural think, conditions at I that point. I think the than, brilliant than the thing about the Bible, um, as we were saying last week. Uh, uh, the, the brilliant thing about the Bible is it's a library, which it says on the front cover, so that's fair enough, isn't it? It's a library of lots of different people contributing the best they understand with their interactions with who God is. And I think that Moses and the people definitely thought that's what they okay. were hearing. What's your take on this story, Andrew? I'm not, I'm, so just help me. So you would, you would say that they, Moses and Aaron, it, when, it, when it says in the text, mm. so you're, you're saying I affirm the historicity because it's a historical text. Yeah. So when it says they then went in and sought the Lord and or it, as multiple times and then and then the word of the Lord came to Moses and he said, yeah. would, 
I can't tell if you're saying you think the word of the Lord did come to Moses or whether actually Moses made up something and it will no, be the word No, 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 I, I wouldn't say that Moses made it up. I'm saying that I, I don't think God does that. I think God's unchangeable and I don't think that God wipes people out for picking up sticks in a desert. And I think that clearly, if you read the Gospels, the Gospel accounts, you'll see that that was Jesus' view. Okay. So well, I'm, saying, where, I'm so saying, I'm saying, I'm, oh, where Jesus talks, uh, where Jesus talks um, about the, when he talks about the Sabbath, he, he talks about the fact that if you'd have understood that God's a God of justice, if you'd have understood God's compassion, you wouldn't have applied uh, these legalistic No, 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 no. he's talking about exactly whether or not you're allowed to he heal people on the Sabbath. He's not talking about whether or not no, he spoke to Moses no, about no, picking no, up sticks. Not, he makes no reference. Well, we're to that, talking about he? different reference then. Oh, which one? Because he's he's talking about he's talking about David's men who went into the yeah, cave yeah. and yeah. So it's, it's a different context. Right, okay, but so even what then, I, but, what I'm I'm saying, but he's not talking about I, picking up sticks. I'm just all I'm okay. saying. No, just, no, of course he's no, but, not. No, but, no, no, but yeah. that's but that's important because yeah, yeah. I think you just said okay. if you look at Jesus, you'd see he obviously said that Numbers fifteen wasn't right. Yeah, I'd like to hear your your perspective on this and why you and. Explain why you feel Steve has. Well, I didn't under, initially. I didn't yeah, understand yeah, what Steve yeah. was saying. I think I do now, okay. which, is, yeah. which is good. Go ahead. Um, so, I don't think Jesus says anything at all about whether or not what Moses heard was right. I think he says an awful lot about why God spoke to Moses in the way mm. he did, mm. not in that instance, admittedly, mm. but throughout the Gospels. And he mm. says, for instance, things like uh, Moses was given this command because of your hardness of heart. Mm. In other words, God spoke to the people and gave instructions that I am now telling you mm. in the new dispensation formed around me, you live differently than what you were you heard back then. But that's not because God didn't speak to Moses. It's because God spoke to Moses at that point to bring them. I agree in that. Hang on. So what agree, was hang on. Hang on. Let, 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 let's to just bring them along a, a yeah. further bit on the journey, which I agree. But say, actually, Moses gave you these instructions because of your hardness of heart. That actually what God was doing was saying on, on the issue of divorce and, and a number of others is saying, I am for this period of time. I'm speaking to you in a way that might in places seem surprising or even in our to our eyes draconian but jesus is, jesus doesn't allow us to say didn't happen or okay. god wasn't speak wait god yeah, wasn't okay. speaking <laughs> what jesus does is to say god was speaking but it is now not what i want you to do anyway so and that doesn't change his mind well no he's not changed his mind because he's talking to different people he's talking to israel his so covenant okay people. Then, wait, then, again, no, no, he's no, talking let's to find his out covenant I mean, people yeah. in the first 40 years of, of law that actually yeah that god God's instructions to Israel are, and I imagine we both agree, God's instructions to Israel are different than his instructions. Jesus does the same. At the beginning of Matthew, he's yeah, saying, see, don't, don't go anywhere among the Gentiles. Yeah. And then at the end of Matthew 20, I, I 28, he's saying... I don't read it like that. I don't read it well, like no, but, that. But, yeah. but, but I think we've got to concede, wouldn't we, that, G, that it's okay for Jesus to say yeah. to one group of people, I want you to do this, which is what he does in Matthew 10, don't go to the Gentiles. By Matthew 28, you're saying things have changed. The story's yeah. moved on. Now go into Just all the world. Before, and I think he's doing yeah. the same Before thing. Steve comes... I think that's a poor exegesis, actually. And I'd like of to what? pull you right back to the point and say, was it? When Moses asked God, shall I kill him for picking up sticks? Shall we kill him for picking up sticks or not? God says, kill him. Did God order that man's death? Yes. And I, I, and think, I think that's Jesus, an appalling misrepresentation. Well, well the, where's God the poor is. exegesis? Tell me, where, yeah. where in the text does it indicate that's I not think, true? I, the text in fact, no, no, says exactly that, yeah. of course. No, 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 so I, I think the I, exegesis would surely force us yeah. to say, that is what the text says. You're saying, yeah. I've got an idea from somewhere else, which no, I'm no, saying no, I'm is not the text saying that right. I'm not saying that at all, Andrew. But what what I'm where does Jesus is, say it didn't happen? What I'm saying, it, I, I think, I, I don't think Jesus says talks about it one way or the other, does yeah, he? Does. So, <laughs> so, 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 so the point is, so... So on what when, basis are you saying it's not? Yeah, well, Jesus doesn't talk about it one way or the other. So first of all, we shouldn't actually try to read Jesus back into this particular story. But that's why you, two technical words here, Right. Exegesis and hermeneutics. So you talk about exegesis, which is looking at what the text actually literally says and what it meant. And what it meant was kill him, mm -hmm. um, whichever way you read it. What I'm saying is we need to read the whole Bible through the lens of Jesus. I have a very high view of Jesus. I've given my life to following mm -hmm. him. I believe you see life through Jesus and understand God most clearly through Jesus. In fact, I think we understand God completely through Jesus. And in the light of who Jesus was and what he taught and how he acted and what he said, I, I think that Jesus would say, well, that was because of your hardness of heart. But what does that mean? I think that means 
you can, you weren't quite here. You weren't, you straight. weren't, or you weren't ready in some way to to see this yeah, new, if new revelation. But God's got a justice, if he Moses doesn't wipe was, out Moses whole groups of people on. or individuals. Well, we'll, if we'll come to the whole justice, groups in a minute. Okay, but. he doesn't wipe out individuals simply because Moses can't hear right. I mean, pre presumably, there's no, Andrew... There's no poor exegesis there, then, at all. You, you said there's poor exegesis. I'm, I'm asking about a hermeneutic. Okay, okay. Well, okay. so, the so bigger point, which is you and, and I might... Bigger, we, we do disagree on hermeneutics. The bigger but it, blend of yeah, what the Bible's yeah. about. Okay. But I think... I think I've got to ask you to be more biblical. Let's allow Andrew to respond, then. Hey, by the way, at the beginning, in, you see, you say Andrew's got a more biblical well, point. In his view, I said. In his view, so I'm saying I have a higher view of yeah. the Bible, yeah. which is Christ-centric, than I think many people do, who well, end up doing some pretty immoral <coughs> things in the end, or repressive things in the name of. I mean, what, individual what I want to hear from you, Andrew, yeah. first of all, is okay. It was a different culture, a different yeah. time that. God was speaking into yeah. and so presumably you believe that there, there is some way of recognizing that in that time and place that I was do. an appropriate there's, punishment there's, for that I man. Do. There's dozens and dozens of them it's not just the guy picking up sticks it's, 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 it's the guy who touches the ark and gets struck down it's the it's the idea that if a priest goes into the holy place he's going to get killed it's the nations that get the whole throughout the bible we have mm. God and striking people Testament down too, yeah and yeah. in the new testament Ananias mm. and Sapphira throughout the bible we have God in the text, exegetically, striking people down for things that we now go, goodness, that sounds, might, might, go like me, might be a little harsh. And when we come to texts like that... Worse than that, do, we'd all we, be dead. Well, right. <laughs> and, but, and, and obviously both Steve and I are going to say, you know, I, I, I think my view is biblical and I think my view is Jesus-centered. I, I, like Steve, would go, where is Jesus on this? And I know he doesn't say anything about Numbers 15, but he says an awful lot about Scripture. He says an awful lot about the law. And he doesn't seem anywhere to indicate that those things didn't didn't happen or misrepresented God. So would you, for and instance, in this case of the Numbers 15 yeah. story, for those who may be not familiar with the context, would you give some kind of view that in that context where the the keeping of the law was so important for the identity of Israel in, the, in its surrounding the blessing cultures, of the world that, depends, that harsh punishment yes, had to the, take place? It did. The blessing of the world depends on Israel being not just dis, not just sort of called, but distinct and separate. And I don't like it. I mean, I read it and I go, well, goodness, that... God really, but that's because I. But then I come to God and I say, if the, if you are the, you you are the God who is entitled to take life from me and entitled to take life from anybody, I, entitled to take life from nations, and there's a humility before God that kicks in at that point, which just says, do you know, if this did happen, it in, illustrates something of your. You only have to do this kind of thing once, just like Ananias and Sapphira only have to do that. You know, there's no other series <laughs> of people being killed by sticks. You know, it, it's almost like, in a tragic, I think in a heartfelt way, God is saying. This is this is tragic in a way, but it will. I know it will make the point that this. I'm serious about you guys being distinct okay. from the nations, Let's and see. nobody has a right to shake their fist at okay. God and say, okay. "I don't think you should have done in that." In response to that, you see, I think Andrew, what you're doing, uh, uh, honestly, is, it, I think you're getting yourself in a knot that you don't need to be in. I don't think I'm in a knot. No, no, at no. All. no well, very hear me out. Right? Hear me out. No, I think you are in a knot. Uh, let me my point of view, you know, I think you're in a knot that you don't need to be in. I think it's very confusing to people. The thing is this, it's not about, well, you've got to let God be who he is. And if he's a raging dragon, he's a raging dragon. But that's God, not what Andrew said, though, is it? I'm, saying, <laughs> I, say, hey, I'm saying that God, I say that every person is safe with God. God does not come to wipe you out for picking up sticks. He doesn't come to slay you because actually you... It, you were less than honest about the amount of money you were given to your church. Um, oh, so you don't think that's true either? Uh, no, no, I think it's true. Right. I think it has. So this, we're talking about. No, just, no, 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 let me, uh, hey, just, let me hear me out because oh, okay. I did listen, okay. didn't okay. I? Right. I did listen. Okay. Can I just, though, for, for those right, who are, so might not know what you're referring to, <laughs> yeah. we're talking at this point about Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament. Did did they get struck down for you lying about happen. About, no, what I do happened, think it about their money, basically. Yeah. But so what do you mean by God doesn't no, come to? No. Well, I think it's the interpretation. You've, I'm sure it's a historical event. I think it's the interpretation that we put on these things. And I, I just, but just going back to the Old Testament, what you said, you see, so Jesus, the, fa the Pharisees, the scribes, the experts in the Bible, the law, the Jewish Bible, bring this woman to Jesus who's got to be stoned according to the law. He says, no. So... I think that in Jesus, I think we both agree about this, yeah. we see God as he is. I think that once you've established that in Jesus you see God as he is, 
He's the end of the journey in one sense. And so you look back at somehow, sometimes the way people misheard and misunderstood. But they were inactive. They were, God was towing on them and they were in relationship with God and he's slowly moving them forward. The great thing is, talking about being separate, I'd like to talk about that. Yeah. You know, that's, in, that's, you know. Can I, can let's, I, let's, let's can I just analyze as far because I'm honestly not sure what you, you see, because I, I think. It's be on the Old Testament. Yeah. Well, 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 no, 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 I know, but, but actually this, but this is critical. It is relevant, critical, yeah, because, I think. Because I, it sounds like you're, initially it sounded like you were just saying, I think there's a whole bunch of things that people heard in the Old Testament that wasn't true. Mm. It now sounds like you're saying that even though Luke says, yeah. and then he I said, you're not lied to men, you lied to God, and then she struck down and breathes her mm. last. Mm. It sounds like you're saying that either that didn't happen, or if it did, no, then no, why I, is that, why is that a, okay and sure not picking up it, I'm sure things, it wasn't? happened, but actually, in the churches I've been part of over the years, I know a whole host of people who've been less than honest with the amount of money they've yeah. been giving, sometimes the church treasurer. <laughs> yes. but, but fortunately, God doesn't strike people down. Uh, I, I, so you think I he did, think. but he doesn't now? No, no, or? I don't think he did. So you I think don't. God didn't... No, 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 wait, 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 no, no, yeah, I, no I, I think I'm clear, Andrew. Let no, me, I, well, I'm not clear. All right, right let me goodness. say it, and then you'll be clear. Okay, okay. I'm saying that in Jesus, we see God as he No, I got that, is. but what yeah. happens to Ananias and Sapphira then? You, he's speaking. They died. Right, so Peter's yeah. speaking, you're saying God didn't strike them down, they coincidentally died that, no, just no, as Peter well, said Well, that. well, let me finish, Andrew, let me finish. Yeah, okay. <laughs> can, I, can I say three sentences yeah, okay. together, then right. I promise I'll shut up afterwards. And, and right. we'll, we'll have Andrew come back. All right. I would say that even in the New Testament, not just the Old Testament, sometimes I think there are there are, in the light of who Jesus is and how Jesus lived and what he taught, there are misrepresentations. So okay. take another one. Say, take another one. Um, the writer of 1 Timothy says that women shouldn't speak in a church because Adam was created before Eve. So she should go. Now, I think that the writer to Timothy, who's probably not Paul, may have been Paul, um, has just not. Reflected I still don't know what Jesus you're doing is. with Ananias and Sapphira then. So you're so saying, I'm, you're no, saying I'm it happens, saying that some, but God yes, doesn't... Happened. So God's... So they say... Because I'm this saying... Because I'm, well, I, 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 I'm think, genuinely muddled I th here, I'm right? saying to you that I think sometimes in your life, if you're anything like me, you've been less than honest and probably less than honest yeah, in agree churches with all that. growing up, and God hasn't struck you no, down. No, agree with that. I totally agree with that, but you're still not answering my question, which is... If Ananias and Sapphira were struck down by God, what's wrong with the Sabbath story that you've got a problem with, which I understand? If they weren't, then how are you saying it happened? I don't, that's what I genuinely don't know what you believe about that story. Well, I think historically, I think they died. I think that then people come along and put their interpretation. So you, so you think, think there was... Well, hang on. So the history... So what happens is, you and I got a video camera. Peter is talking to them and saying, you haven't lied to, the, to men, you've lied mm. to God. Mm. And she spontaneously drops out of something that's got nothing to do with divine mm. intervention or mm. providence at all. I, and everybody goes, oh, goodness, that looks suspicious. Mm. That is not a historical... That's terrible exegesis, Steve. Surely no, no, that, no. that's reading all kinds of our assumptions no, into the I, text. It's I reading Jesus... It's reading Jesus into Peter the knew text. Jesus pretty well. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he did. And I'm sure that this lady drops down dead. She may have been scared out of her living daylights. I have no idea. Okay. But she she may have had so a heart God, condition, but I do not believe that God, God wipes people out. Down. I was once, I was once, very sadly, in a charismatic church in this country, and, and a leader that I could name, and we'd all know, I watched him uh, tell a guy at the communion table, that God was going to strike him down. Yeah, and I'm dead. not endorsing okay. that at all. Well, ten years but later, ten years later, that, ten uh, years later, this man and his wife came to see me with some others, and he'd lived the last ten years in a state of basically mental breakdown. Okay. Because and that of this is, well, that is well, awful. Okay. That's awful. It is but awful. Let, let it let's is. allow Andrew but, to respond. But, but, I think, yeah. but that's, I think, hmm. again, you're... You, you, connecting, I think, a tragic contemporary example with a way of reading text if, that, that to me, I, I think you initially, I, I just, I think you're, you're I think so you're a not, not, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, okay. I think you're a okay. not, not me, because I think you're saying 
Historically, I believe it happened. And I think it must have been a, a coincidence and people ended up misunderstanding it. And you're saying, I don't believe God ever strikes people down, which means that you're going through text after passage after passage in the Old Testament, which yes. Jesus seemed happy to quote and just no, say, didn't. wait, wait. Well, so, so Moses yeah, sermon in Deuteronomy, okay. Jesus quotes three times and says, it is written. Calling Je Jesus to be happy with all this well, stuff no, no, is Jesus, way outside no, no, what the no, no, Bible Jesus says. Jesus quotes Deuteronomy 6 to 8 three times and we've got all sorts of things in there mm. that I imagine would be on your blacklist yeah, of things you don't like. But just hold off. Yeah. So... You're saying that in every story in which it says, and the Lord struck down, or the angel of the Lord was mm. sent and struck down, including those in the New Testament, mm. a, you know, angel mm. striking down Herod or whatever, you're saying all of them are wrong. I think, and at Jesus' view of the Bible is no, not no, like no. that. It's not like so I can go through this with a postmodern Western filter and go, yeah. all of those bits no, don't no. work. There is, uh, there is this I secondary think, question. Can I, say, can I talk about the postmodern Western filter? Uh, okay. I, I think, Andrew, the problem is that's exactly what you apply to the whole text. It, what, what, what we got to do, the Old Testament. It's a, it's a library, as I keep saying. It has lots of conflicting views within it anyway. Sometimes God's credited with this. Sometimes it's Satan that's credited with that. So the Hebrew mind doesn't have to approach it in the logical fashion. Logical that you're approaching it. Hang on, no, no, no. The, so the this is I'm a approaching is very when modern it says, reading no, 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 of the no. Bible and when not says, a very well, accurate Hang on a second. One, when right. it says, yeah. God, and God struck down, or, and the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down, you're saying all of those passages well, are wrong. Well, They're just it, inaccurate. So and I'm saying Jesus' view of the Bible example, is not Which gets like us back okay. to the Old Testament. There's the, in the 1 Samuel story, where David issues, takes a sense. No, 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 because that's not the question. The question is, does God strike people down? And when it says he does, you're saying the Andrew, text is wrong. Let and I'm me, saying no, Jesus let me doesn't quote like the that. text to you. Let we're we're going to no, have no, to start wrapping this up, yeah, guys. So, let so, me so, quote the text. No, it is. It is. Okay, actually, guys. Well, we, let we, me we, quote it and then we decide. We, 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 we in, can't have to talk Samuel, okay. In 1 Samuel, um, God, um, David takes a census because God asks him to. And then God strikes everybody down as the story goes through. They get a plague. In the 1 Chronicles version of exactly the same event, it's Satan, the devil, uh, Satan that, that, that tempts David to mm. take the census and then God strikes them all mm. down. So God does some striking down. Um, the Bible has two completely different views. Was this God or was it Satan that ordered this thing? Either way, God ends up angry and he strikes a lot of people out. So I'm saying that, that these just those two stories in themselves pose such huge problems no, don't, that's what to a with world, the crucifixion, the world view of Job, the Bible. It's what happens with Judas. It's what happens throughout the Bible. Let, let, let's, but there is divine and human and sometimes yeah. enemy agency at work yeah. in the same events. Yeah. It's what happens with Judas. I think you must agree that yeah. Judas is to blame, but God has also orchestrated and foreordained that plan. That's what happens. Think, the Bible presents I a more think, complex picture than well, you're we, prepared to allow. We're going to have to talk to you about that story as well. We might get a chance to pick this up again. It's obviously something you're both passionate about, um, yes. and I'm sorry we haven't got an hour to debate this subject. <coughs> it feels like we need it, but we're going to have to leave it just for the moment, gents. Thank you very much. It's been a really fascinating to and fro on this one. Uh, we started with the Old Testament. We moved on to the New Testament. Well, we'll next back. week, we'll be continuing in the New Testament as we ask the questions around things like atonement and um, how do we know what the Bible says about the nature of Jesus' death on the cross and what it achieved. Uh, that's an area that Steve again has certainly caused controversy in the past in the evangelical church. So thank you for watching today's program. If you want to find out more about my guests, the articles they've written for Christianity Magazine and watch more of these videos as we continue to debate how we should read the Bible, do check out the website christianitymagazine.co.uk slash Bible debate. I've been Justin Briley. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs>